Welcome to People Analytics in Excel, Employee Attrition. So we've successfully built a regression model of which employees will leave our company. So now we move on to the final step, interpreting our results. So once again, here's the results of our model. I can use control right arrow to come across until I reach this right here which you can see is labeled my classification table. I know this better as a confusion matrix, which is how I'll refer to it throughout this video. But let's use a more visually appealing version of the same data, and then we'll talk about what it means. So I've taken this right here and I've put it into PowerPoint. So I'm gonna come back to my PowerPoint presentation here. And I'll go ahead and make some quick changes, and here we go. All right. Here's our confusion matrix. Now. We know that, somewhat counterintuitively, success in our model means that an employee left, while failure means that they stayed. So I'm just going to replace those labels with new labels, leave and stay, which better represent what we really want to talk about here. My values in the columns show how many employees I originally observed either staying at or leaving my firm. This observed data is my original data set, so these are the true original values. These are the numbers that actually stayed or left. You can see that a total of 237 employees left the firm, while 1,233 stayed for a total of 1,470 employees. The rows, on the other hand, show what my model predicted. If you read across from left to right, you can see that our model predicted that 139 employees left the firm and 1,331 stayed. Again, we have a grand total of 1,470 employees. Using this confusion matrix, we can begin to understand where our model did well and where it did poorly. For instance, we can see that 90.8% of employees in our model that our model predicted would stay actually did remain with the firm, while 82% of our attrition predictions were also correct. We get a different perspective if we take a column-wise look at our accuracy. Of the 237 employees who left, our model only correctly classified 114 or 48.1% of them. Of the 1,233 who stayed, it accurately predicted 1,208, or 97.8%. So we can see that we're doing a much better job at predicting who will stay rather than who will leave. So what makes this valuable is it gives you a way of assessing where your model is making mistakes, because all models make mistakes. As the statistician George Box is famously credited with, with having said, all models are wrong, but some are useful. By understanding where our model is wrong, we can make better model-based decisions. There are four types of statistical errors, but two are of interest to us in this context. The first is a type 1 error. This occurs when we believe something to be true, but it turns out to be false. In this context, we make a type 1 error if we incorrectly predict that an employee will leave. And then this can have real business consequences if you're using this model to drive spending on retention program because each type 1 error in that case comes with a specific dollar cost, money you spent trying to retain somebody who never meant to leave in the first place. Type 1 errors are more commonly known as false positives. A type 2 error occurs when we believe something to be false but it turns out to be true. In our example, we have committed a type 2 error when we predict an employee will stay but they actually leave. Again, this can have financial ramifications. If we could have retained the employee by taking some action, but didn't because our model misled us, we now have to pay the additional cost of replacing that individual. And as everyone in HR knows, the cost of hiring can exceed an employee's salary, sometimes by a multiple of that employee's salary. So a type 2 error in our example can potentially be very costly. So this is also known as a false negative. Now it's beyond the scope of this video to demonstrate how to do this, but I'd like to leave you with a final thought as a spur to follow on projects. If you had a good estimate for the cost of both type 1 and type 2 errors, you could easily tweak your model to change the degree to which it erred either in favor of predicting attrition or retention. So your model, when it's all said and done, will always be at least a little wrong, but if it's generally wrong in the right ways, it can save you a whole lot of money. If you like what you're seeing here, please feel free to click the subscribe button on your screen or look up the People Analytics Alaska group on Facebook or LinkedIn. And until next time, Happy learning.